everybody. Hey, good morning to everybody down in Mullaloo. Let's give them a hand right here. Welcome. If you're in Mullaloo, give me a clap so I know you're there. And can we give a big clap, everybody, for everybody online? Let's welcome everybody online. Hey, if we haven't met, my name is Dean. I'm part of the team here at True North. And I think it is an exciting thing when we get to kind of gather as one body, one tribe across, you know, here at Malu, and then people scattered different places connecting online. But to know that we are one church together. Uh, if you're a part of the tribe at True North, we are one church wherever we find ourselves. And if you're someone who's new here and just kind of maybe curious about church or faith, uh, we just want to say a huge welcome to you, however you got here. Uh, we just want you to know we're, we're glad you're here, and so feel free to just make yourself at home. Uh, we want you to know you're just at home with us. But today is a special uh, day. This is our Vision Sunday, part two. Uh, we got so much vision, so many things believe uh, God wants for us this year. Decided one Sunday was not enough. Uh, in fact, two is not enough. Next Sunday is Vision Sunday, part three. And uh, so we're just going to call it Vision Sundays uh, this year. But really behind all that is this idea of we really believe there's a lot God is wanting to speak and say to us. And there's something about kind of aligning together at the beginning of a year and to say, here's where we're going. Uh, and let's get kind of orientated to that together. Uh, last Sunday, we kind of kicked off this time revisiting and being reminded of this 10-year beyond the horizon vision that we believe God has given to us as a church. Going back to 2016, when we saw God and felt this is our 10-year our vision, which means we are like halfway through. We're in the point where we're halfway over the ocean. We're halfway to the destination. And so that's part of why I think it's so important to stop and say, hey, this is where God's taken us. And even if we're online, different locations, wherever we are, it's how we all kind of get onto the same page. Does that sound good? So our vision, as we went through a little bit last uh, week over this 10 years, is this idea of we believe God's called us to be a center for renewal. Let me hear you say renewal wherever you are. Renewal. renewal. Center for renewal as we passionately pursue the presence of God. And these two ideas, presence and renewal, always go together in the scriptures. And so today, I want to just kind of, we're going to today dive into a story that's just a great picture of what renewal looks like uh, in the scriptures. I want to give us some kind of concrete pictures of times the people of God has experienced renewal. Uh, but before we do that, I want to talk for a moment about why renewal is so important. Uh, you might find yourself going, I'm still struggling to wrap my head around this whole idea of renewal and what that looks like. That's why we're spending some time on this. And why do we need, why is it so important uh, to focus on renewal? And the reason we have to think about renewal is because guess what? Everything that's new always gets old. That was the right answer. Anyone who got that? Uh, it wasn't a trick question, just new stuff. If you don't know this new stuff, gets old. Now, if you take nothing else away today, I hope you'll realize something. New stuff gets old. Let me hear you say that. New stuff gets old. I, uh, we have uh, two cars in our family. One of them is a 1999 Toyota Camry Vienta. Now, if you are not familiar with the 99 Camry, uh, many people feel it is perhaps the pinnacle moment in the history of cars. Actually, uh, not a lot of people feel that. Now, this car, ours in particular, it has on it now, we've had it for about eight years, it has on it about 330,000 plus kilometers. I want to tell you something about the car when it was new. Uh, it had leather seats, or at least vinyl. I honestly don't know how you tell the difference. But it had uh, leather interior. It had a sunroof. It still has a sunroof. Actually, that hasn't been damaged. Uh, it had beautiful gold paint job. Uh, my family now affectionately refers to this car as the brown car. Uh, now, <laughs> if you don't know that, you can just imagine why you call uh, you know, a car the brown. I'm like, no, it's gold. And they're like, no, it's brown. And um, its paint job has been kind of so marred by the sun, it seems a bit beyond repair. Once upon a time, that car drove off a new showroom floor, right? It would have come complete with the best part of any new car, which is the smell. We all, everybody knows that. Nobody knows old stuff, new stuff gets old. Everybody knows best part of a new car. New car smell is like the best. There is something about when it's brand new, you know? Now, 
that leather interior, it's like faded and it's like decaying and falling apart. The sides, the panel, some of it's falling down. Uh, you know, the, it's all those things. Now, it just, at the end of the day, new stuff gets old. And some of you are like, Dean, there's some things you could have done to that car. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, new stuff gets old. Now, the only way it will get new again, right, it actually could, a lot could happen to that car if I put in the effort, if I put in the, the dollars, if I put in the energy, it could be renewed to a degree, right? Now, why is that not happening? Well, because I've never heard of anyone restoring a 1999 Camry, okay? <laughs> I just, you know, I got my friend Calvin is restoring. If you don't know, uh, Calvin is restoring a 1987 VL Calais. Who would like one of those? Now, that's a car worth restoring. Yeah, we got some claps on that. <laughs> There's some people like that. You know, if you watch it online, you could comment what you'd like to restore. But here's the thing. You just need to know this. God has woven into the way things work that without attention, that which was once new gets old. Why must we focus on renewal as a church? Because if we do not focus on keeping our faith new, vibrant, and alive, it will grow old. This is the history of God's work and his church and his people. Uh, this is why, you know, some of us, it's the beginning of a new year. You may be somebody who's here and it's February. You started January like this. We love the idea of a new year and a new you and the idea that maybe I could be new again. This is something that is within the hunger of the human heart. And this is why it's so important as a church that we uh, understand and say, here's what renewal looks like and how we see it in the scriptures. So this morning, we're going to spend a bit of time looking at a picture of what renewal looks like for the people of God. I want us to get our heads around this. I want us to go into 2022 as a church, as a tribe, as a people going, we are going to be people who walk in renewal. The beautiful thing we saw last week is that the scriptures hold out this promise, 2 Corinthians, that we can be renewed inwardly day by day, that our faith deep within who we are is the one thing that never needs to grow old. We can be, as Paul said, we can have light and momentary troubles, adversity, but when we allow God to do an inward renewal work, we can live in renewal. Now, the story we're going to look at today comes from Judges chapter 6. And renewal is something you see all across the scriptures. And the book of Judges in the Old Testament is one of the, a book that's almost been written entirely around a picture of renewal. If you read through Judges and commentators, they always talk about how Judges pictures this consistent cycle that the people of God are experiencing, where they have these moments of great kind of highs in their faith and where all is going well. But then time goes by and they drift off and they get caught up in what's happening around them and they start to drift away from God. And then God has to send someone who comes and brings times of renewal. And so we're going to look at one of my favorite renewal stories, which is the story of Gideon. And, and I love the story of Gideon. I think it's a great picture for us as a people. And I hope for you as an individual, you'll be able to identify with some of the experiences Gideon has and knowing what renewal can look like in your life. Judges chapter 6, verse 1, tells us, The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountains, clefts, caves, and strongholds. See, not too long before this, just some, you know, seven years before, maybe a little bit further back in their history, Things have been going well for the people of God. They've been flourishing. God had used a judge previously to bring great deliverance. But now we see they are once again finding themselves, uh, they're, they're being oppressed by the Midianites. They're hiding in caves. Things are not going well. They are not flourishing. And it says in verse 3, Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples invaded the country. They camped on the land, and they ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock, their tents, like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. Now, I want you to just see this. This is the backdrop to our story. Everything we're going to understand about what the renewal looks like, is going to take place against the backdrop of a time of great adversity, a time of great challenge, a time of great difficulty. 
But finally, in the midst of that time, it says that they started to cry out to God again for help. Verse 7 says, When the Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Do you remember what? This is like the prophet, through this prophet, it's like God saying, Do you remember what it was like when this was new? When I was forming you to be my people? I brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians. And I delivered you from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you. And I gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you've not listened to me. We're going to pause there. You see, in this story, we see, as it begins, uh, this idea that moments for renewal always are uh, a great renewal, more often than not, we'll say, is occasioned by moments of great adversity. Because what often happens, and this word from the prophet is like this reminder to the people of God here. Don't you remember what it was like when, when things were new? God, God is like, I acted in powerful ways. Imagine if you're a person of faith here today. Imagine the initial moments in your walk with the Lord when you became aware of who he was, of what he had done for you. The, the joy of first receiving the free gift of salvation in your life and knowing that you were created with purpose, that God was for you, not against you. Try to imagine what it was like when your faith was new. For most of us, in those moments there, somewhere in there, even if you're like me, I grew up, I can hardly remember a moment of my life without faith. Uh, I grew up in it. But I know there are moments in my journey with the Lord that I can look back and just like, wow, those were great moments of, of walking with the Lord. But inevitably, what can happen to any of us is what happened to the people of Israel here, which is time goes by and you just start to drift. And renewal is about those moments when God, God sends a prophet and, and he's trying to help remind them. He's trying to help call them back because he wants this occasion where things are not going well to become an occasion for renewal. Do you know, I think one of the reasons I, I, I guess I'm excited about 2022, and let's be honest, a lot of people around the world are not really excited about 2022. Uh, I, what I've noticed is people kind of used to get excited about New Year's. And over the last few years, most people hit New Year's and like, I'm just not excited. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that. Because there's so much uncertainty in the world. We're still living through a pandemic and various challenges that it creates, not just for us here, but around the world and loved ones. We are living in a time of challenge and adversity. And it would be, uh, you know, foolish to pretend otherwise. But every time we find ourselves in a moment like that, like the Israelites found themselves in here where things are not going well, we are always offered this opportunity that we can see those moments of difficulty and challenge as either great opportunity or we can just look at them as, as uh, almost just problems we'd prefer to avoid. But I guess the thing I, I can't help but think is you can't ever ignore reality so why not look, even in the moments of challenge and adversity, for the promise that could be held within it? And I believe that God is wanting to use some of the challenges that everyone is experiencing, that in his hands we can actually allow these to be moments for renewal in our own lives. Because sometimes we are just not open to renewal until something comes along that reminds us, say, wait a second, where, how did I get here? You know, when we first moved to Australia, I uh, decided I would learn uh, to surf. Now, I'm born and raised in Akron, Ohio, and you will never see a surf competition held in Akron, Ohio. And uh, so when we moved to Australia, I thought, you know, we may only be here for a year. I, I think I'm going to make sure I learn to surf because that is an opportunity never been afforded in my life before. I, I, I did my best for probably a year or two. I tried to kind of get the hang of it. I, I realized, like, I think when you're from Akron, just don't bother too much with surfing, okay? <laughs> That's what, but I had some great times. I, took a, I was doing youth ministry at the time, and there was a, a kid who was graduating. He was in year 12. 
And his parents asked me if I would, he didn't want to go on levers with big parties and everything. And so they asked me, would you just take him down on a surf trip uh, for a few days? Take him down to Yelling Up, we'll cover it all. But just go, he just wants to surf. I'm like, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm the servant of the Lord. Here I am, send me. If, if you need me to go to Yelling Up for a few days, I, I'm a servant. And I believe that's our posture, and I'm willing. I will lay down my life, uh, you know, to serve my Lord Jesus. So we went down there, and I, I went down to serve the Lord Jesus in Yelling Up for a few days. And we would go surfing every day. More accurately, he would go surfing. I would go out on a board, and I would try to do things that resembled surfing. Uh, what I realized was the hardest part to me in surfing is you have to constantly, it's like the ocean's constantly saying, go, go that way. But if you want to surf, you have to keep getting out that way. And so you would go and surf, and I would go back out. Anyway, we were somewhere uh, and, and surfing, and he was surfing, and I was like, I'm exhausted from like going in, paddling out, going in, battling the waves. And so I kind of thought, you know what, I'm just going to kind of sit out the back behind where those waves are breaking and just relax because my favorite thing about the water is just kind of chilling, you know. So I was on my surfboard and I'm like, I'm just going to sit here. This would be beautiful. I'm just going to kind of stay put, watch them. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Like I'm looking in the water. It was real still where I was. It was just real easy going. And I was just there, and I'm like, I literally kind of laid down almost like I was going to take a nap. And I'm just like, this is the best, you know? And I'm just laying there, looking through the water, seeing fish, and, you know, a dolphin swam by. That didn't happen. I wish it had. That would have been perfect. But as I'm laying there, eventually, I kind of look up, and I'm like, hey, those guys I was just sitting right behind, I'm a long way away from them. Wait a second. I didn't notice, but while I was just sitting here, something has happened. I thought I was just staying still. And I realized, I start looking, I'm like, well, I better paddle back to them. So I start trying to paddle. And then I realize, that's weird. I'm not going anywhere. And, and I realize, like, now I'm sort of like, oh, I'm a bit panicky. I'm like, this doesn't happen in Akron, Ohio. What is going on <laughs> right here? And, uh, and I realize, and there's a guy actually on the beach. I look up, and there's a dude on the beach, and he starts pointing. He's way far away, and he says, point. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. I learned this. Somebody told, you know, uh, rip. I'm in a rip. I realize finally I'm in a rip. And so, but I didn't realize I was in that rip, and I start paddling sideways and, and eventually drift in and all those things, and, and it worked out fine. I didn't die because I'm here, and you know that. <laughs> But what I think some of us just don't realize is that we can go through life, and when things are going well and they're kind of cruisy, we think we're just staying still. And it, and it could be perfectly honest. I think that's the way a lot of the world in the West, we got to realize we don't, we're not the majority of the world. The majority of the world experiences life in a very difficult reality all the time. For many of us in the West, we experience uh, life is almost just like, how could it get much better? We wouldn't have said it. We would have said we have problems and all this. But we, we're used to a world with unlimited travel, unlimited almost kind of freedom for certain, you know, just economic prospect. We just sort of, the, the last couple of years shook that. And what I believe is, I'm not saying God did it because we were doing this or that. That is, we're not getting into, I think, trying to guess why and how stuff happens. That's above my pay grade. But what I believe that God can do in a moment like what we've experienced is sometimes he wants us to stop and to look around and to go, wait a second, where am I? And how did I get here? I think with the people of Israel, it's like through the Midianites, they'd had a time of prosperity and things going well. Now they're getting smashed by all these neighboring peoples. Things are not going well. But God wants to use this as an occasion to go, do you realize something? You've forgotten all about me, is what he's saying to the people of Israel at that time. Not because he's mean, and not because he just wants to, to yell at them, but because he wants them to realize, you've forgotten who I am. You've drifted far from me. And, and it's almost like God saying, if in my hands you will seek me in this moment, this can be an occasion for great renewal. I believe that is one of the beautiful opportunities of our day. To when life's a bit, I mean, I don't know about you. Like, I used to travel to the U.S. once a year. I don't, I don't talk about, like, the pandemic as if it's no big deal and we should all just kind of get, and, you know, there's challenges. It's created. I experience this. Maybe nothing compared to what many of you will. I'm not saying that any of us has it kind of worse. My point is this. I know it's a difficult time, but what I believe is in God's hands, if we will not miss this moment, it could be an occasion for renewal, revitalization, a refreshment of what is life all about. 
You see, what God does, as he often does in times of renewal, is he invites people to now play a part in that renewal. And in the Older Testament, God periodically pours out his spirit on specific people at specific times for specific occasions. I, I want to be clear so we don't lose track of this in the story. If you're a follower of Jesus today, the, the, the pouring out of God's spirit is no longer reserved for specific people, times, places. It is given to every believer in Christ who can now play their part. So if you're a follower of Jesus, I want you to... Look at Gideon's life, not as though he was some exception person that we could never aspire to be like, but as actually almost a picture of what every spirit-empowered believer in Christ is called to when it comes to renewal. So in verse 11, it says, the angel of the Lord came. This is going to be all about the invitation to renewal. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abizrite. Hey, so if you're reading your Bible then and you thought it belonged to Dave the Abizrite, it wasn't. It was the tree that belonged to Joash the Abizrite. Anyway, I just wanted to clarify that. I love how the Bible gives you the specific details you need. Um, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press, Dave the Abiz right. Anybody know that guy? Dave the Abiz right. Anyway, I'm sorry. Um, I'll focus, I promise. So this is where Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. He's, he's threshing wheat. Normally he used to do that kind of up above ground. Effectively, he's gone down in the cellar to hide. This is the state of where things are at. And, uh, and, and this angel comes. And when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Now, I'll pause here for a second. I love this because God looks at Gideon and he says, I see a mighty warrior. And I'm about to give you an invitation to be part of my work. Uh, some of you here today need to know that's how God sees you. As someone who's got purpose in life far beyond just enjoying the good life, just cruising on a surfboard, just relaxing out in the water thinking, how good is this? God has purpose for your life. In verse 13, pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, because this is the angel's like, the Lord is with you. Uh, no, if he's with us, why has all this happened to us? Where is all his wonders that our ancestors told us about? When they said, didn't the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord's abandoned us and he's given us into the hand of Midian. Pause for a second. This is so often our experience of faith. Wait a second. Is the Lord still with me? I mean, what about those old days? What about when he used to do this, when he used to do that? And then the Lord says to him, verse 14, the Lord turned to him and he said, go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? I love this a picture. Like, didn't I just say, go? You know, you're talking to me about what the Lord used to do. Didn't I just say, I want you to go do one of those things? Am I not sending you? And the, but Gideon is like, oh, verse 15, Par pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But how could I? How can I do anything about this? How can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh. I'm the least in my family. And the Lord answered, I will be with you. Wherever you are, let me hear you say, I will be with you. God is saying, my presence will be with you, Gideon. That's what inspires renewal. Not your strength, Gideon. Not who you are or where you're from. Me being with you. That's where renewal comes from. And you will strike down all the Midianites. You'll leave none alive. Verse 16. Now this is what I, I want us to see here. That times of renewal always come about through God inviting people to be a part of those times of renewal. And times of renewal are when, uh, when things get made new again, fresh again, alive again, vital again. Times of renewal are when we realize we've actually just been drifting and we're far from the purposes and the dreams God has from our life. Times of renewal are when we step into the fullness of what God actually dreams for your life and mine. And this is a moment where God is inviting Gideon to be part of that renewal. Do you know God's invitation to you and to me and my invitation to our whole church is this year, would you uh, let this be a year where you say, I want to choose renewal. I want to be a part of renewal. 
You know, when we think about renewal, I want to give you one little snapshot here, because I think this is kind of helpful so that we understand a little bit of what we think about when we say renewal and, and how it works. Uh, I've got a, a circle, a picture of three circles here for you. And the center circle is personal renewal. When we talk about renewal, it always starts with an individual. It always starts with a person who chooses to walk in renewal, who chooses to walk in a fresh, you know, experience of God's presence in their life. We always, uh, but the Bible pictures that personal renewal always leading to a corporate renewal. God doesn't look at us as a bunch of individuals. He's, Jesus said, I'm building my church. I'm building my community of believers. Uh, we see the story of the Old Testament and, and into the, is the story of the people of God that God is creating, the community of faith, into the New Testament, the church becoming the people of God in this world. Corporate renewal is when the people of God experience renewal as a body in the church, the people of God. It is flourishing. And then there is cultural renewal. The goal and the dream is not just that, well, there would be flourishing churches, but that the people of God would make an impact in renewing the wider culture around us. And so when we think about what it is to be a center for renewal, we are always thinking about what does it look like to be people who personally are walking in renewal, who are walking in a vibrant, dynamic walk with the Lord. And as we do that together as a community, dreaming, desiring to be a church that's experiencing renewal, and that renewal looks like when churches flourish and grow and plant other churches and renew other churches and see new people coming to faith and, and people uh, encountering Christ, the alphas, all these things. That renewal sees the church advancing in this world. And then that spills out into how we are now becoming a renewal influence in the culture around us. Jesus described us like the leaven and the bread, and we should have the light on the, the city of the hill, the salt of the earth. We are meant to have an impact that is transforming culture around us, and that renewal goes into our homes, our workplaces, our families. It goes into the things we create and work and put our hands and our hearts into. Renewal is always meant to keep spilling out because renewal is about the presence of God. If you go back to when the God created the world when the world was new. God dwelled with his people in this world. That's why so much of the scriptures is all about the presence of God once again filling this world as the waters cover the sea. And it starts with us as individuals responding to that call. You know, this morning, uh, and we're going to pick up a little bit more of Gideon's story next week. But my invitation to you this morning is, you know, is there a part of you that maybe thinks, you know what, Lord, I want to respond to that invitation to renewal this year. I don't want to drift along. I don't want to just kind of go through the motions. I don't want to look up one day and realize I'm far away from where I intended to be. I want to walk hand in hand with my Savior. I want to live a life that is being inwardly renewed day by day. Jesus has promised us that the, those who come to him, streams of living water would flow from within. This is the whole idea that actually God's spirit, we don't need to allow our lives. We don't need to. This cycle that you see in Judges is not inevitable. We are called to walk in continuous renewal. We're invited to it, to experience streams of living water that flow up in our lives that expand outward and we journey together as a church and, and outward as we uh, are, are actually a part of seeing culture renewed around us as well. I love the promise of renewal. I love the story of Gideon. And, and I love his story because I relate, sometimes people ask, you know, who do you relate to most in the scriptures? I always say I relate perhaps more than almost any other, uh, you know, character in the scriptures. I often think of Gideon because I, I always feel a, a lot like Gideon, that sense of, but who, who, who am I? The, God, why would you ask me to do this or to do that? Like, I, there's got to be somebody better on your list. But I know that God looks at every single one of us and he doesn't see what we're capable of in our own strength. He doesn't see what we're capable of just because of who we are or where we're from. He sees what we are capable of if we are full of his Holy Spirit in this world. And so he looks at you and he looks at me. And as followers of Jesus, he says, greetings, mighty warrior. 
Greetings, person of valor. It's one of the other translations. He sees people who could be a part of a mighty renewal in this world. Of seeing his presence spill out like these just waves that are washing, washing over this good world he has created. And so I want to invite you today to just consider responding to that invitation to say, I want to be a person who chooses. That circle can start with me. You know what? I, I look and I'm like, I want to see our church experience renewal and times of flourishing. I, I believe we're seeing God do incredible things. So I, this is not like I think, oh, we've dried up and lost our way. I, God is doing incredible things, and so I celebrate that. But one of my mentors always used this phrase, we, we've got to be always grateful but never content. I'm so grateful for all the things that God's doing. I'm not bitter or, or wishing, you know, God, why can't I be? No, I'm so grateful for what God's doing. But we cannot content ourselves because with God there is always more. As we always say, and it says in Ephesians, there is more than we could ask or imagine according to his power that's at work within us. That was at work within Gideon that can be at work within you. And so as we start a fresh year together, my invitation to you today is a real simple one. Next week is part three of our vision series. We're going to talk about a lot of the practical things that we can do together, practical ways you can be a part of renewal this year, how we're going to, uh, you know, how we as a tribe can journey together. And so I, I hope you're here next week, and, and that's going to be a fantastic. But today I've just got one invitation, and that is just to, to make a decision today to say, God, I want to hear that. I want to hear the invitation to renewal, and I want to choose that today. I don't want to look at, you know, uh, this year as, oh, it's going to be just full of problems or challenges. I want to see every problem and challenge as an opportunity to draw me closer to you, Lord. To grow to being the kind of person, a renewed person who's being renewed inwardly from the inside out. Transforming, renewing our minds, making us people who are taking on the mind of Christ. Living renewed lives in this world. So see, I can, I can want our whole church to just be walking in that, but I can't do that, or I can't convince you, and I can't force you for sure, and I can't, all I can do, and it's the same choice that you can make as me, is say, I want to walk in renewal. There's a great old story about this, uh, you know, preacher in the 19th century, Gypsy Smith, and he was born to, to gypsies, that's how he got his nickname, I think in England he was born, and he... Uh, was a part of some great revivals and awakenings and times of renewal. And, and he was never educated, but he was the kind of person whose life experienced more than he could have asked or imagined. He, he never even was educated, but he ended up lecturing at times at Harvard. He was invited twice to the White House in the U.S. across the globe. This guy experienced a life of renewal. And he was asked one time, how do you do this and achieve that? And he tells this famous story. Many of you have probably heard it. He says, if you want to experience it, he was using the word revival. We're going to use the word, we're using the word renewal. I think revival is when you, re renewal goes widespread and just keeps going and going. But he said, you, you go home and you draw a circle around yourself and you say, God, let there be a revival in this circle. And if we want to experience renewal, we do it not by trying to, Force culture to be something. We wish the world would bend to our whims. Do, no, 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 no. If we want to see renewal, we don't go, oh, I wish the church would be this or the church would be that. I wish it could just, if I, no, no, no. We're invited. All I can do, all you can do, say, God, I'm going to draw a circle around myself and say, Lord, would you please bring renewal inside this circle? Would you bring renewal in my life? Would you awaken me to the plans and purposes you have for me? Would you enable me? And this is perhaps the key. Lord, would you enable me to know that you are with me? Lord, you, let me know you are with me. If you know the Lord is with you, that is where renewal comes from. In fact, I want to just share one last picture with you. I hope that's all right. Down in Malu, don't lose me. I got one last picture for you. If you're online, don't tune out. But this picture, do you know what it's like when you know that God's presence is with you? I was actually, I was praying last night, spending some time with him, and this was the picture he just gave me, so I want to share it in case it really helps somebody today. When you know the Lord is with you, and that's the essence of renewal, it's knowing God's presence is with you. It's that feeling that's like you do have the wind at your back. Now here's the thing about having the wind at your back. And when I was having this conversation with the Lord, I was actually out running, and there was wind, and and he kind of 
directed my attention to this. You know, when you know God's presence is with you, it's just like everything gets a little bit easier. That wind is at your back. Now, sometimes I think what happens is people go, well, if the wind's at, the ba- at my back, why does life feel so hard right now? Because it doesn't feel, I feel like I'm running into the wind. And the thing God told me is you just have to realize that wind is at your back, but the conditions of life are not always flat. And they're not always downhill. How many people know when the wind's at your back and it's flat, boy, it's going to feel great. When the wind's at your back and it's downhill, real favorable conditions, it feels like anything is possible. But sometimes the wind's at your back, but you're going up such a steep hill, you barely notice that wind is there. And you might feel like, what is going on? But what you don't realize is that that wind is the only thing that's helping you keep going up that hill. And I just want you to know, I believe God wants you to just know his presence in your life. And it is like a wind that's at your back. And there might be moments when, man, it just feels like everything is going full speed ahead. And those are great moments and we should be thankful for them. But there are some times when the conditions of life are so challenging, but it does not mean God is not with you. In fact, often it's his presence is the only way you're continuing to still get one foot in front of the other. But there's nothing more important that you and I can know if we're going to walk in renewal, if we're going to experience renewal, a renewal that starts with us and flows outward and outward and outward. It is all about knowing that God's presence is with us. It's about seeking more of him in our lives. It's not about trying to change our behaviors and behavior. It's about inner transformation that comes from God's Holy Spirit. And so here's my invitation to you today. Wherever you are, down Malu, watching online, just let today be a day that you say, God, because God never, he doesn't force his way into your life. But maybe today is a day to say, God, I just, I want, I'm going to draw a circle around myself, so to speak. And I'm saying, God, I want renewal in this circle. I'm asking for more of your Holy Spirit in my life. I want to know that you're with me. Because when you know God's with you, it doesn't matter how steep the hill, how treacherous the conditions. When God's with us, it's what it's all about. It's the only thing that was going to matter for Gideon. He just needed to know the Lord's like, I will be with you. And so I'm going to invite you just to, to do this. Let's do it like this. We'll make it pretty simple. And then we're going to sing a, a song together. We're going to sing it here and down in Malu. We're going to sing this song. You've sung it once already today down there about this fresh wind in our lives, the fresh wind of God's Holy Spirit, the fresh wind of his presence. We're going to sing this song together and we're going to make it a prayer. But just before we dive into that song, I just want to invite you to, you know, that if, if it resonates in your heart, I don't want anybody to feel like, okay, I need to do this because he wants us to stand or something like that. I just want, if you're a person who says, I'm hungry for this, I want to experience renewal in my life. I'm drawing a circle around my life right now. And I just want to say, God, I want more of your spirit in my life. Then I'm going to invite you just to stand in one moment. And as you stand up, I just want to pray especially for you. And I mean this with all my heart. You don't need to feel like you have to do this. But it's if you're especially feeling today. And there's going to be lots of days and times that we'll pray for renewal. It's going to be a big theme for us, I, I hope, this year praying into. But if you know today, that's I want, I want in this year. I sense God's on the move. I sense he's doing some things I want in. And so I'm just saying, God, it's not about me looking anywhere else, but just to me. I just want to pray for you and ask God's spirit to come down. And then during this next song, if you want somebody to pray with you into that, I love praying for people. So if you're here, you can come down. I'll be down the front, some others. And I think there's sometimes just something special about praying for one another. So during the song, if you're down in Malu, you can come down during the song. Pastor Riley's there. Pastor Lisa's there. They'd love to pray for you. But we're just going to say, God, we want to see renewal. We want to see it start with me. And so if you want to be a part of that prayer, just stand up where you are, and I'm going to pray for you. Just stand up down at Mullaloo. Stand up uh, where you are online. Don't stand up if you're driving. But if you are able to stand, and we're just going to open our hands and say, God, let it start with me. Let it start with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You desire no less to move in our lives, to do those deeds of old in our day. You are no different than in Gideon's day. And so God, where maybe uh, uh, for any of us who are here today and feeling like we 
drifted or lost touch with the the joy of our salvation. God, I want to pray right now a fresh filling of your Holy Spirit. God, let your spirit just fall on every individual who is who is standing just saying, Lord, let renewal start with me. Let your spirit fall. Let it fill our hearts. Let those streams of living water well up deep within. Awaken some of the passions that maybe we've known in days gone by. Renew faith to believe for what you can do. Change our perspectives and our hearts from the inside out, our our mindsets and our desires that, God, we might walk in renewal. Renewal that shines like a light in a dark world. Renewal that starts on the inside and flows outward. God, renew those deeds that you have done as in days of old in our day. Come, Holy Spirit, inside each and every circle right here. Begin to fill us afresh. Lord, we want to respond to your invitation to walk in renewal and newness of life, daily transformed from the inside out. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you that you come to each one of us. Stands before you humbly, open hands and open hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. And I want to invite you, if you want prayer during this next song, please love to pray for you. And let's make this song a prayer, a prayer together to seek for more of his Holy Spirit in our lives today and this year.